Hey, what's up? This is the show where I review my whole Steam library. We're still going through the number titles, which brings us to today's game, 112 Operator. I'll tell you a little bit about how I like the game and why it might actually save your life one day. First things first though, this game is about playing as an emergency call center agent. You have to deal with callers and decide whether or not to send emergency services to certain places. I've played the game for a couple hours now, that's roughly how long it held my attention for. When you boot up the game there's different modes to select. A free play mode with your city that gets detected, a scenario based mode where you recreate certain events as well as a campaign with 8 different cities. Berlin, Istanbul, London, Madrid, Moscow, Paris, Rome and Warsaw, all with their unique challenges. The game starts out simple with the very few parts of town that you have to manage. As time goes on and you get promoted, you will be responsible for managing more and more areas. Not only will you manage more stuff in general, but the weather will also play a role in how well your game will go. Rainstorms will disable some of your troops, heat waves will provoke more fires and dehydration related emergencies and so on. A defining feature of the game is managing callers and deciding which, if any, troops you will send. Sometimes you will get trolled by callers, sometimes you think you're being trolled when actually it's a real emergency and there's a serial killer on the other end. I had a call that I skipped pretty quickly, only to find out that that encounter was called an alive word attempt. Yeah, sorry about that. Also, if you take bad decisions and give the wrong advice, you'll have to listen to the consequences as well. One, one, two. What's your emergency? Sir, scream as loud as you can. It will attract attention. Sir? Sir? What happened? The rest of the time is pretty easy to decide what to do though. Not being 100% sure if you should send someone or not, or what exactly to say, is what makes it exciting and interesting. This probably wouldn't work in the highest difficulties, but I usually had so much spare time and free resources that I could still check up on those calls I wasn't sure about. Callers won't always want to tell you their location, for example when they plan to unalive themselves or troll you, so then you will have to stall for time so you can locate them. This makes it more realistic and exciting, because you don't know if you can stall long enough and you start getting invested in the outcome. Sometimes callers won't listen, even if you give them the correct instructions. This one guy said he smelled gas, but refused to get out of the house because his sister was still in the house. I don't know if I could have saved him if I chose different instructions, but after he eventually blew up the house, I felt pretty bad. Is the light in the staircase on? It may cause an ignition if there's too much gas in the air. Something happened here. You need to leave the building. Firefighters will evacuate everyone when they get there. I can't leave the building! My sister is there! I'm coming up! Everybody! Leave the building now! Hard to breathe here. You need to run! I can't imagine how real operators feel after they hear something bad happen on the other side. After each day you get some money, depending on how well you did, which you can buy upgrades and additional units with. I'm sure that you can min-max this a lot and that is very important in higher difficulties, but I didn't bother with it too much because it was pretty overwhelming seeing it for the first time. You can buy more and more different cars that all have different attributes. Some can carry more people, some are very fast. There's helicopters, you can even put dogs on your cars, so there's a lot of variety to try out. Sometimes the variety of vehicles was frustrating though, because not every car can fit patients, so I went to a scene only to find out this car can't finish this emergency. So I'm sorry that you're having a stroke, Brenda, but you're gonna have to be patient a little longer while the other car drives over from the other side of town. I like the email section of that menu. You get information about upcoming challenges like heat waves, football games and other stuff like hey, there's a killer on the loose, they have prior number one. So you get storylines that span multiple days, which I liked a lot. In my game I chased a killer that shot people with crossbows for multiple days. There was a false alarm where some lady claimed she saw the killer, so I checked up on that. Then I guided someone through being chased by the killer, which uh, didn't end so well for them. 
and eventually we caught the killer. All in all, this was a pretty cool overarching story. So why is this game potentially going to save your life? There's info screens where they actually show you the steps to take when there's a medical emergency. They talk about heart attack signs, signs of hypothermia, how to behave when there's a panic crowd, and a lot of other good stuff that you can read through in peace. There's also a bunch of information that's not just common sense like, oh, don't touch a high voltage line, hey, so it's worth reading through in my opinion. So if you ever were to need chest compressions and came across the 112 operator 5000 hours giga chad, I would feel safer than if we replaced that guy with your average league gamer. Sure, just going to first aid course would probably be better, but in a time where dudes learn shitty rear naked chokes by watching the UFC... You're a regular guy who can put guys in sleeper holds. Yes. And happens to be... You know, if you put your mind to it, you can do whatever you want. That's what I always mm -hmm. uh, think about, so... But we should also... You're a fine physical specimen. I mean, do you train for this? <laughs> Uh, you, not, I mean, not, you obviously know how to do it. This not, doesn't look like your first time. Not for that. That was actually my first time it in, my, was? in my life. No! Yeah. And a small boy can use the literal World of Warcraft taunt IRL to save his sister from an angry moose. It can't hurt to know the heart attack protocol or what to do when someone gets electrocuted. So to wrap it up, what are the pros of getting this game? You'll learn a little bit of secondhand first aid. You get a glimpse into how it feels to be an emergency worker. If you like these types of games with uh, resource management and min-maxing, then it might be worth a shot. As for the cons, the game will probably get uh, repetitive at some point with uh, the same calls and also the gameplay loop is kind of always the same. So I couldn't really play more than an hour at a time because it yeah, just kind of got boring after a little bit. But all in all, this is a cute game that will hold most people's attention for a couple hours especially if you like resource management games, um, then you could probably spend way longer on it and explore higher difficulties and challenges. Also, there's the scenarios, as I mentioned, so there's some content here. I would say this is a pretty inoffensive recommend. If you enjoyed this week's review, then uh, subscribe. Good luck.